Tonight on the Night Team. Nationally renowned attorneys are representing one of the victims of the massive explosion at the Jividan plant. They say they're now seeking justice and accountability. While the Clifton neighborhood is lending helping hands, days after the explosion that left the community reeling. And we service the community and we need to take care of the community when they're in times of need. One local bar's efforts to give support to those impacted. And later, a grandmother's plea on the day her granddaughter would have turned eight years old. Checking fire alarms, changing batteries, making it a schedule. Three lives lost in a house fire. How a city is now changing the rules to make sure this tragedy doesn't happen again. You're watching the WHAS 1119. And just into the newsroom, a man is dead following a double shooting outside of a Russell neighborhood club. It's our top story here on the night team. I'm Alex Dieterer. LMPD says it happened around 830 tonight in the parking lot of Club Cedar. That's on South 26th Street, a few blocks from the Norton Healthcare Sports and Learning Center. LMPD says when officers arrived, they found two adult men had been shot. One was pronounced dead at the scene and the other was taken to the hospital with a gunshot wound to the leg. If you have any information on this incident, you're urged to call LMPD's anonymous tip line. That number is 574-LMPD. And a man is dead tonight after leading Louisville Metro Police on a high-speed chase through multiple counties. LMPD says the man shot himself in his car as the chase appeared to be coming to a close. Police say the incident began around 930 this morning when they attempted to pull over the man on Dixie Highway for having outstanding warrants. Police say that's when the man fled the scene. The man drove into Oldham County before re-entering Louisville, where he eventually hit a parked car on 39th and Broadway. LMPD says the man kept driving for a moment after that, before eventually returning to the area where he shot and killed himself. Police also say a second collision happened during this pursuit and that involved an LMPD officer. This one happened at 22nd and Broadway. Police say an officer's car and another car collided, injuring two civilians in the car. The two people went to the hospital, but they are expected to be okay. The officer was uninjured. A man was hit and killed by a semi in St. Matthews yesterday evening. Police say the man was riding his bike around five last night near Westport Road and Sharon Avenue when he was hit. He was pronounced dead at the scene. St. Matthews police say they haven't confirmed why or how the man was struck. Authorities say the semi driver stayed at the scene and no charges have been filed. New for you tonight, the family of one of the Jividan victims has hired lawyers saying they're seeking justice and accountability for the loved one they lost during Tuesday's plant explosion. The family of Kevin Dawson Jr. has hired attorneys Ben Crump, Mark Lanier and Lonita Baker, who are trial lawyers that have worked multiple high profile cases in the past. That includes the cases of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Attorney Ben Crump issued the following statement saying in part, quote, early report Report suggests serious safety lapses and ignored warnings that endangered employees and the community. We will fight tirelessly to uncover the truth and hold those responsible accountable." End quote. The attorneys and Dawson Jr.'s family are set to speak at a press conference tomorrow afternoon at the Baker Injury Law Firm. The Clifton neighborhood is still reeling after that massive explosion. Homes and businesses in Clifton still picking up the pieces. To help those impacted by the explosion, Spring Street Bar and Grill held a fundraiser, fundraiser today. WHAS 11 photojournalist Levi Hammer and I have their message to the community. An explosion at the Jividon plant that shook the Clifton neighborhood. It blew stuff off the walls and I'm surprised the windows didn't break. Pretty scary stuff. And then uh, once we realized that it wasn't something imminent in our property, we realized something even more catastrophic happened in the neighborhood. Two employees were killed in the explosion. Others sent to the hospital for injuries. Homes nearby the plant were damaged from the blast, and businesses and buildings had glass windows blown out. Clifton is a very neighborhoodly area. Spring Street Bar and Grill saw their neighborhood grieving and wanted to help. We're a member of the community. 
and we service the community and we need to take care of the community when they're in times of need. Sunday, the bar and grill donated 10% of all proceeds to those impacted by the explosion. It impacted not just the people that work at those businesses, but I know some of our distributors even were friends with the people that were injured during, like the people that deliver our food, beer, etc. They have friends that were working there during the explosion and were hospitalized. A neighborhood leaning on one another while they heal, knowing they will move forward. Whether the company is still there or not, the neighborhood's going to move forward. They're going to pick up the broken glass and help their neighbors, and that's what Clifton does. The fundraiser runs until 4 a.m., so you still have plenty of time to stop by. And as a reminder, the company will come face to face with residents in a community meeting tomorrow night at 6. It's at the United Crescent Hill Ministries building on State Street. Metro Council member Andrew Owen will also be there. Two young girls and a pregnant mother were killed in a Lebanon Junction house fire in January of 2023. The fire department says the three died from smoke inhalation and the house had no working smoke detectors. Tonight, we're hearing from one of the girl's grandmothers on that little girl's birthday. WHS 1119's Alexandra Goldberg and photojournalist Aspen Hester have the grandmother's plea so other families don't have to go through the same tragedy that she couldn't be saved, but we can try to save as many others as we can because that's what Reagan would want. And she would also want every little girl to know to have a good tube of lipstick and to keep your nails polished. Remembering Reagan Merriman, this girl who should have been turning eight years old on Sunday. We would have already ordered a cake. Reagan died in a house fire in January 2023, along with her pregnant stepmother and six-year-old stepsister. Authorities confirmed the Lebanon Junction home did not have working smoke detectors. Now, Reagan's grandmother, Tina Swan, is hoping no other family has to live through this grief. Checking fire alarms changing batteries, making it a schedule. Fire safety awareness. We can have the fanciest equipment as possible, but the, the true savior of life is a working smoke detector in your home. Shepherdsville firefighter Todd Bevin says since the tragedy, Bullitt County passed an ordinance that requires smoke detectors in homes, and the department will install them for anyone and for free. Since this incident happened, we have probably doubled to triple the amount of smoke detectors that we are putting up. Spreading the message. But Reagan would want me to make people aware so that someone else isn't lost. That's all I have. In more ways than one. This billboard goes up once a year on Reagan's birthday. Reagan's grandmother says with her larger than life personality, it's exactly what she would have wanted. I hear her voice. And I know she would say, my mom, mom, let's ride by one more time because that was her personality. It was big and bright and bold and beautiful. Remembering the little things. How if her lipstick wasn't on straight, <laughs> her reaction. But never losing sight of what can be done to prevent another tragedy. In Lebanon Junction, Alexandra Goldberg, WHIS 11 night team on your side. Shepherdsville Fire says they do nearly 250 smoke detector installations a year. Lebanon Junction Fire Chief Adam Heath says since the county ordinance was enacted, the department has installed 75 smoke detectors in Lebanon Junction alone. Today is World Day of Remembrance for road traffic victims. Pairs of shoes line the hallways at Jefferson Community and Technical College to symbolize the lives lost in roadway crashes. The event is held every third Sunday in November to honor the victims. Family members of roadway crash victims share their loved ones' stories and pleas for their community. That includes Brandy Stafford Wright, whose 19-year-old son was hit and killed by a car in 2023. We have an issue in our city um, with people who are being hit and killed in roadway crashes and, you know, people are not stopping, they're not rendering aid, they're not doing um, their due diligence as, you know, human beings to make sure that people are okay. Local leaders also used today's gathering to renew their call for state legislation that allows automated speed enforcement in Kentucky. I'm going to do everything I can within Frankfurt and city to to bring these cameras because I think they're necessary. We don't have enough officers to to do what we need to do to monitor these speeders, but we do have technology that can do the same thing. 
According to the Federal Highway Administration, speed safety cameras can reduce roadway fatalities by 20 to 37 percent. Looking ahead to tomorrow, the JCPS task force will meet for the final time. The group was formed to study the district and is made up of lawmakers, local leaders and parents. The last time it met was in October, where the task force heard from Prismatic Services. That's the company JCPS hired to investigate last year's first day transportation disaster. The Prismatic president testified, saying the company made dozens of recommendations to JCPS to fix the problems. Tomorrow's meeting starts at 3 in Frankfurt. Also in JCPS news, the district's clothing assistance program or CAP is opening a brand new warehouse tomorrow. CAP helps JCPS students and families get all the new and used clothes, shoes, accessories they may need for school. JCPS families who need assistance with clothing are eligible to receive items twice each year through the program. Each student enrolled at JCPS is eligible to receive a new pair of khaki or navy uniform pants, a new polo style uniform shirt, a new belt, five new pairs of white socks, and five new pairs of underwear. The new warehouse will be located at 1400 West Jefferson Street.